Mm -hmm. Hi, YouTube. It's Mary once again. Uh, this video, I'm going to do my best to explain this. Harold and I were talking a couple of weeks ago. But let me turn this TV down. The conversation was about people who get happy in church and what make people do, do act like that. And he was saying how he used to go to church with his grandmother. And he'd be sitting next to her. And she'd be getting in the spirit. And then she'd look at him. And then he'd look at her. And, and then she said, I'm okay, babe. I'm okay. I'm not, like, I'm not going to cut up. But I was explaining to him what the Holy Spirit meant to me. And... It, it, when I was explaining to him, it's just like something came over me and the words just flowed out of my mouth. And I, I don't know if I can repeat it, but it was plain. It was plain enough for him to say, I want to experience that. That's, that's In the end of it, that's what he said. But now I'm going to explain what the Holy Spirit is to me. Like I've said before, I've always had a spiritual contact with my my God or me. I mean, just in the beginning, I, I knew there was something else. But when my mother, I got old enough and was introduced in the church, and they told us we need to seek the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and I was I was a bit confused. I said, "Well, what is?" I said to myself, "What is this voice that I've been hearing all my life that's protecting me?" So it was kind of hard for me to seek the Holy Ghost, but I did like they told me and fasted and prayed and asked God to forgive me for my sins and and be glad for the Lord. That's the way Church of God of Christ tell you to do. Be glad for the Lord. And they had a thing called the mourner's bench. They pull out this altar and everybody that wanted the Holy Ghost had to sit there. And these people, church members get around you and clapping you. Thank, you had to say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Say it fast as you could. Thank, 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 thank. And you keep doing it. Eventually, your tongue will get tired. But I, you know, I sit on a bench, and a lot of us would. But before they pull out the benches, we had already said who was going to go ahead and get happy and act like they were getting the Holy Ghost so we could get off, you know, turn service out. Because you'd be there till 2 or 3 o'clock trying to get the Holy Ghost. So... We played like that for a while. But this one summer, the preacher's daughter was running a revival. And it's something happened. I earnestly sought this, what they was telling me about, the comforter. And that summer, I could say about 10 of us young people, ages 15, 16, to 18 years old, received the Holy Ghost, and with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, me, I I received it at home, because I was, I was just so overjoyed with this, this feeling, the good feeling of God, and all that, and I, oh, I couldn't wait to pray, and, and let, let, you know, you hold your arms up, and ask God to just, oh, you surrender, total surrender, and you, I got addicted to that feeling of joy. And this happened one day when I was at home by myself. I was 17. And lo and behold, I started speaking in a different language. And I didn't know what I was saying, but I knew that's what it was. And I finally, it kind of eased up off me. And then I went and laid on the sofa. I mean, in my bed. And about 5 o'clock when my mother got out from work, she kind of shook me and wake me up. And I was opening my mouth to tell her what had happened. But when I opened my mouth, I was speaking in tongues again. And my mother said, oh my God, my baby got the Holy Ghost. And I was shaking, my my, my jaw was just, just like you're having an epileptic seizure. I was just shaking. And so we went to church that night and the same thing happened. The, the feeling just came again. I was speaking in tongues and going on. And it was one girl, I never will forget her, May, when the Holy Ghost got her, she was just, 
she would ball her arm like this and she was crying. And she would go, buh, 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 buh. she was trying not to speak in tongues, fighting it. And they would say, give up, give up. And then she threw her arms up and then just start speaking in tongues. So that was a time that was going on. Uh, whatever year it was, it had to be 70, 70, the year 1970, I believe. Yeah, by 1969. Anyway, it was a wave during that revival. And so many kids got filled with the Holy Ghost. So Harold asked me, what what make you do like that? What do you feel? I was trying to explain it to him. I said, when you, it, it's like joy. You see people when they win something you know, on these game shows and they just, they don't even win. They just call out their name for them to go up there and spin the wheel. People just jumping and hollering and screaming and and that's the way it is. It's joy. And it's such a joyful feeling. And that's, that's the best I could explain it. But I just, and I, you know what? I, the Holy Spirit to me doesn't have anything to do with religion, even though you learn to surrender to the Spirit through church. But people talk about how bad, what a terrible person I was when I left the church and got on drugs and that and that. And during that time, I wasn't speaking in tongues doing all that. I didn't even have any, I didn't have the joy of the Lord. I was in the wilderness for real. But when I found my way down that street with the light on it, I, the joy came back. And, and the, the Bible does say the joy of the Lord is our strength. So that's what that is to me, the Holy Spirit. It's like, oh, when a lover wants to uh, be with you. And you know the love is there. The Holy Ghost is like that. And your lover may uh, kiss you on your cheek or your neck or rub you. And you'll, you'll know that that's what they want to do. And if you turn a cold shoulder, your lover may keep on nudging you. But the Holy Spirit doesn't do that. It'll nudge you. And if you quench the Holy Spirit and turn a cold shoulder, the Holy Spirit just goes on and Go, go somewhere else. I was telling my friend that uh, I can be driving and the Holy Spirit will come and nudge me. And I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> and I want to say not now, but I, I can't. And I said, let me pull over. And I'll pull my car over off the road at the back of the service station or in the car wash. And I'll just surrender and I'll scream and I'll cry. And I have to stretch my arms up and say, yes, Lord. And when when the Spirit gets through doing what we have to do, and I, I'm just as happy as I can be when I come on back home, get in my car and drive. But I was telling him that that... Feeling with the Holy Spirit, you know, when you're having sex and people talk about how good it is to reach a climax, in comparison to reaching your greatest climax and the visitation of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit just outweighs that, oh, a thousand percent. My friend was saying, what? I said, yes. And and it's, it, you are full. It's just so much joy. I, I, I can't explain it, and I'm so so thankful that that spirit is still with me, and it's just a good thing, and that's just my take on the Holy Spirit, but man, it's kind of like uh, in the Bible said, oh, taste and see. You got to taste and see what that is, because when the time comes where you can't seek that joy in pleasures of the physical body, the carnal sex, and the, the um, climax with sex and all that, the joy in your heart is there. And one thing I never understood until it happened to me. I now when I when I had a Holy Spirit, I'm a screamer. I'm I, and sometimes I can I have done backflips. I I don't know how that happened. 
black backflips and just scream. But I've seen people who take out and run. And I said, Lord, <laughs> oh, I couldn't do that. I don't never want to do that. Man, one night doing a revival, I that spirit to run got on me, and I said, oh, Lord, wait a minute. <laughs> I took off running. And it was a little bit of and I took off running. I said, ooh, if, maybe if I go outside and run, maybe the spirit will get off me. So I started pulling on the door to get out. And thankfully, it was a heavy door, you know, with a long metal bar, and I couldn't get out. And I just stood there speaking in tongues, holding that door. But I ran all over the church. I said, ooh, Lord, I, I can't believe I'm, I turned into a runner. But now I understand why people run, because people who win money, they, they're happy, and they take off running sometimes. So it's the same thing as just how happy you are. I guess that's why they call it, I got happy in church. So, But anyway, I thought I'd bring that up. If anybody has felt the actual speaking in tongues and the joy of the Lord, and how do you act? Because a lot of people act different. My mother, she wasn't a screamer. She wasn't nothing. She would just stand there and cry. Just tears would just roll down her face. So it's just different ways. But they're just speaking in tongues. I still do that now. And I'm not in the spirit or anything. I can just be walking around the house and sweeping or something. All of a sudden, I start speaking in tongues. And I say, amen. And I'll put the broom down and sit down and entertain the comforter and it it doesn't take all day to do that but it's still a good feeling but anyway i thought i'd make this quick video about that uh anybody felt like that just leave a comment okay bye bye